Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I turned that <laughs> microphone off before I cough. Huh? <clears throat> oh, well. Praise the Lord. It's good to be a Christian and to be able to know that we can go to Jesus. Amen. Y'all ready for the word this morning? Word. I want to read to you from the Gospel of John. And I'm preaching a very simple message this morning. How many of y'all like simple message? Nothing too deep, nothing too complicated. Sweetest little boy in the world right there. <laughs> when he wants when he wants to. <clears throat> Thank God for my children. I love them both. Hopefully they grow up to be good children, right? I want to read to you from the Gospel of John, chapter 14. We read verse 23 through uh, 27. I'm preaching to you on something that you already know, but I felt impressed to preach about this. And so um, let's look to the Bible, read it in verse 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. And the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost... Whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And I want to use that as our text, verse 27, where he said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not, focus on that, right? Not as the world giveth. Give I unto you, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So using that, this text and that verse, I want to compare the two gifts. Jesus wants to give us something, and the world wants to give us something, right? And I use it for a title this morning, God's Gifts Are Better. And you all already know that, right? God's Gifts Are Better. So let's seek to get His gifts, not the gifts that the world wants to give us. Amen. Um, yeah, Marvin, would you please pray? <clears throat> Father, thank you for our pastor. Father, thank you for each song. That is present. Father, touch each one according to their individual needs. Father, let us understand your will and do all things pleasing in your sight, giving you the honor and glory. Father, bless the message and the messenger in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to preach about God's gifts are better. And before I get into the message, let's do a little Bible study. Y'all need some Bible study this morning? I just want to point this out. I was reading it this morning. I was like, you know what? It is so clear in this Bible reading that God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Ghost, they're not the same person. You know, they're not one as in the same individual. They're one as in unity. As he said that when a man and a woman get married, he said the two shall become one. They're not the same. Lord knows a man is not the same as a woman, and a woman is not the same as a man. But he said the two shall become one in unity and in purpose and in goals and stuff like that. So when he speaks of one, he's speaking about unity. But here he shows you so clear. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him. And what? He said we. Now, I'm not the best English student, but I know we mean more than one. I know they're trying to change all of these days, right? <laughs> but we means more than one. I come unto him and he said, make what? Our abode. 
right? That means more than one, right? And then he talked about the Holy Ghost, verse 26. He said, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom, in a, speaking of a person, the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. And he said, he. So it's not a thing, as some religion teaches, that the Holy Ghost is just a force. He is a person and masculine. He said, he. So God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, there are three that makes up one Godhead, right? So that's just a little Bible say. You already know that. But it's just, if somebody ever questioned you, it's right there in the Bible, right? It's like a triangle. Anybody seen, seen a triangle? <laughs> it's one triangle, but it have three angles, right? What happens if you take one of the angle off? It becomes an acute angle or something like that, right? Not quite a right angle, but like that. So it's not a triangle anymore, <laughs> right? But you put the three angles there, two 45-degree angles, it makes one triangle. Not two triangle, not three triangle, but one triangle, but three different angles. It's one way of putting it, right? Whatever, we're not getting to Trinity teaching this morning. Y'all know that. But just to sh point that out, I love to do that. So because there's a lot of deception out there, people have a lot of misunderstanding of who God is. It's not God the Father, He was in heaven, and then part of Him was on earth, and then... You know, all kind of teachings. There are three distinct individuals, right? Remember when um, the stone, the apostle, or the stone Stephen in the book of Acts? The Bible said the stone Stephen to death as he was preaching the gospel. I was listening to that, this Bible, or listening to Acts this morning as I was getting ready, the book of Acts. The Bible says Stephen looked up into heaven and he saw the glory of God. And where was Jesus? Standing on the right hand of God, right? Two, there's always two. Right? And then the Holy Ghost was on earth doing the work of the Lord. Right? So there are three distinct individuals. If you have any confusion of that, um, it's in the Bible. It's very clear. Okay? It's very clear. But getting back to the message, God's gifts are better. <coughs> I read a story a long time ago, and uh, it came back to my mind this morning as I was preparing this message, about Berlin. When they had the Berlin Wall was built, and East Berlin was separated from West Berlin, and one side was free, and the other side was a part of communist uh, beliefs. And it said that uh, one day the people in East Berlin was trying to start up some trouble with the people in West Berlin, and so they took a truck, a dump truck full of trash, and they dumped it. They drove across, you know, over the wall and just dumped it on the side of West Berlin, and you know, trying to you know, start up a little bit of fuss, whatever. And it said that the people in West Berlin could have loaded back all up and took it over and, you know, dump it right back over to them. But instead, and they, they wanted to do that, <laughs> but they thought about it better and they said, you know what? Instead of doing that, they loaded up the dump truck with all kind of canned food and um, bread and milk and all kind of provision of food and stuff like that. And they took it over the East Berlin side and they stack it up real nice and neat. And they put a sign in there and said, each give what each has. <laughs> right? And showing them that you give us trash because that's all you have. Because you're living under communism. Y'all better vote right this time if you don't want to go there. Amen? And they will take us there little by little. Amen? And, but the people in West Berlin... Give them what they had, good things, food, bread, milk, things that they can use. And so it is in this Bible reading, Jesus said, I love that part. A lot of times you read the first part of it where Jesus said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. See, God gives us good things, right? But I love the part he said, not as the world giveth, right? There's two different things. God wants to give us good things. The world wants to give us not so good things. And I'm not talking about the material things. Thank God for the material blessings. Yeah, yeah, it, <clears throat> the cars, the house, the blessings, clothes, all that stuff is wonderful. But there are things that the world wants to give us that can trouble our souls. The world wants to give us so many things that will lead us away from a good, strong relationship with God. And we have to understand that even though those things may seem appetizing at the moment, they seem gratifying to the flesh... It will lead us away from that closeness with God. And we need that closeness with God. 
We need that relationship with the Lord. We need to stay focused on God because uh, the Bible tells us in the book of James, he said every, James chapter 1 verse 17, it said every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. God already made it clear in the Bible that everything that is good, everything that is pleasant, everything that causes man's heart to rejoice in the right way and to have peace and happiness comes from the Lord. Amen. It comes from the Lord. And so we're talking about God's gifts versus the gift of the world. We want the better gift. How many of you all want the better things in life? Amen. We don't want the trash, a truck full of trash. We want a truck full of bread. Right? We want the good things. Right, we want the blessings because each gift what each has. The world doesn't have anything good that will satisfy the soul and the spirits of man. If it did, Jesus would not have to come and die on the cross. The woman at the well, Jacob well, would not have been going there over and over seeking and searching for something that would quench the thirst in her spirit and in her soul. It was only after Jesus came and spoke to her and said, if you knew the gift of God... And who is it that said unto thee, give me the drink, that I would have given you living water? It, was, it, it, wasn't, it, it, it wasn't until that point that she understood that, man, I can be fully satisfied with the cravings of my soul if I look to God for that living water. How many of y'all want some living water this morning? Y'all going to preach with me this morning? All right, now. I think I'm preaching something that you already know. You, should, you know, something you can shout about. <laughs> something good. God's given me good things. Every good gift is from the Lord. Every perfect gift is from the Lord. You see, according to the Bible, whichever gifts we receive will bring us closer to the giver. If we receive the gift of God, it will bring us closer because then we are delighting ourselves after the Lord and He will give us what? The desire. He will give us the desires of heart, because that what you delight after is what you're desiring after. So if I'm delighting after God and I'm desiring after God, God will give me more of himself. It brings me closer to the giver, right? If I, if I receive the gifts of the world, then no doubt it will bring me closer to the, to the world, right? And, and then we see that, that people in the, that are not saved, they're longing after the things of the world, the sins, the passion, the pleasure of sin. And that's what they're going after. And that's the reason why they're so far from God. Because the Bible said sin is what separates people from God. Right? And so if we, <clears throat> if we receive the gift, it will bring us closer to If we receive the, God's gift, it will bring us closer to Him. If we receive the gift of the world, it will bring us closer to the world. And that's the, why, that's the reason why the Bible gives us so many warnings about the world. The scripture tells us we live in the world, but we're not of the world as Christians. Right? We are in the world. We have a life to live. God will bless us. He's never taken away the good things of life. He said he will give us all our needs and desires and stuff like that. But he said that we're not living for that. Amen? We're not pursuing that. We're not pursuing the things of the world and, and the things of, 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 uh, of sinfulness. We're pursuing God. And because of that, we will receive all the good blessings of the Lord. But if we are in our hearts pursuing the world, then it will draw us away from God. Right? Because they're the opposite. He said a carnal mind cannot please God. The spiritual mind can, but a carnal mind can't. And we know that. How many of y'all know this morning? Y'all going to preach with me this morning. You know when you're praying and you're walking close to God, you feel that closeness, don't you? You feel that goodness of God. You, you know, you know, man, this, I'm, I'm making a connection. Well, you know once you're not praying like you used to, and you're not faithful in the Word of God like you used to, and you're not meditating, you're not thinking about God like you used to, you feel that distance, don't you? Am I telling, am I preaching, what am I doing this morning? I'm just reading the crowd this morning. <laughs> Man said, I, I, may not know how to, I may not know how to speak properly, but I can really keep the crowd alert. It's because I'm a cross-eyed disc thrower. <laughs> they don't know who I'm throwing at. <laughs> Everybody paying attention. It's coming somewhere, somehow. 
But the Bible gives us a lot of warning about the gifts of the world. I hear Jesus, he said, not as he said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not like the world. The world doesn't give us things like God gives us, right? And so the world does give us things, but not like God. And so the pleasure of sin, the things that will cause us to, you know, be separated or, or distance ourselves from the Lord, those are not of God. Things that affect the spirit and the soul, that cause the soul to become weak, the spirit to not crave the goodness and the, and, and the closeness of God. Those are the things that are not good for us. And God warns us about that. He told us there in John, I read a little bit in John chapter 17, verse 14 through 16. He said, <coughs> he said I have given them thy word. That's Jesus speaking about his disciples. He said, I've given them thy word and the world had hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Right? Jesus said, I'm not of the world. I just came here for a purpose. And he's saying, a Christian is not of the world. A Christian is a citizen of where? Of heaven. Right? He said, let your conversation be as it become the gospel. That conversation means your manner of lifestyle. Right? He said, live like you are a child of heaven. Right? And then he said in verse 15, I say, he said, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Or we'll stop at verse 16. Right? He said, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. So the Bible tells us as a Christian, we may live in this world, but we're not of it. We don't follow the fads and fashions and the mentality and the things that the world promotes and pushes. We know that's contrary to the gospel and to God. Now, he even told us also in the, gospel, in the, in the book of 1 John, I'm talking about but the gifts of God are better, right? The gifts of God are better. In 1 John chapter 1 or chapter 2, verse 15, he said, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, if any man love the world, he said, the love of the Father is not in him. And that's very serious idea, isn't it? He said, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it's of the world. And he said, and the world passed it away, and the lust or the desires thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. And throughout many other scripture, God warns us about the things that the world gives. Right? And here Jesus in our text saying, I want to give you peace. I want my peace to fill your heart. I want my presence to fill your life. Not like the world gives. The world doesn't give anything that will bring peace. Matter of fact, when you look at the world, you see it brings, a, it gives a temporary fix. Right? It gives a temporary fix that end up leaving a greater emptiness in the souls of men and women. And we know that because we have all come from the world of that sinful way. And we know that if that had satisfied us, we would not have come to Jesus. Right? Yes, it gives a pleasure. The Bible says sin is deceitful. Paul wrote in the book of, um, of, of, in the book of Romans, he says, sin deceived me and by it it slew me. Right? Y'all read in the Bible. Sin is very deceptive. And he talked about, uh, he talked about, um, about the, 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 the nature of sin and different things. And he said it, it will leave an emptiness in the hearts of men and women. So the things that the world gives, uh, number one, it distracts us from God. It disappoints, it brings disappointments of all kind. It brings a lack of spirituality and closeness and devotion to God, these are the things that the world gives. And the Bible said that's what becomes, if we're allowing any of those things to fill our hearts and our life, it causes us to become an enemy to God. And it leads us away from the closest to God. And he said, God doesn't want that. Amen? And so he said, don't love the world. He's talking about those kind of things. Don't love the world. He's not saying it's wrong for you to have an nice things in the world or to go on a vacation or something. He's not talking about that. He's talking about the sinful things of the world that lure men and women away from their relationship with God. Amen? He said the world, the world gives what it have. What does the world have? Each give what each has, right? 
Remember the story? Berlin, y'all forgot that already, didn't you? There was a story I read many years ago, I'm going to start all over again, <laughs> about East Berlin and West Berlin. <laughs> Not quite. But each give what each has. The world gives division. Right? They want to divide us by race and this and that. That's of the world. That's not of God. God created all of us in His own image. None of us chose the color of our skin or anything else. We had no choice in that. Right? Matter of fact, we just when we when we, when when a man and a woman have a child, they're wondering what is the child's gonna look like when they come out. <laughs> Are they gonna have my nose or have her ears? Her? We don't know, right? All we, all the man, all the, all of the man did was sow seed. <laughs> That's all he did. God is the one that gave that baby life and everything else. Amen. And so we have no control of how we came into the world, what size we are, how high or tall, whatever it is. It's all God. But the world wants to divide us. That's not of God. The vision of that sort is not of God. The world brings this, this vision. The world brings discouragement. The world fills the hearts and the minds of men and women with doubts, with distraction, with destruction, and eventually with doom. That's not good. But I want to talk about God's gifts this morning, which is better. God's gifts are better. Jesus said, not like the world give. Amen? Not like the world give. He said, I want to give you peace. How many of y'all want peace this morning? You know, you can have peace in troubled times. Amen? You can have peace in difficult times. Even we were driving to church this morning and my vehicle started shaking real hard. The lights start flashing and I had, you know, the whole car. We had a full car coming here, kids and every, adults and everything. And I was far away from home. I was far away from church. <laughs> what do you do, preacher? We prayed. <laughs> we prayed. We said, Lord, help us. Amen. Help us to make it to the house of the Lord and we pray it and we have peace and I can still come to church and shout and have a good time because that's not my joy. Yeah, I got to deal with that and fix that, but that has nothing with my peace. Amen. It may cost me some money, but it's not going to cost me my peace. It may cost me some money and some discomfort and some, and some um, you know, some whatever, but it's not going to steal my joy because this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away. Amen. God's gifts are better. God's gifts are much better. He stated peace. He said, God, he said, my peace I give unto you. I can have peace in my soul. I can have peace in my heart. I can have peace in all of my relationships, my family, my, 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 my friends, everything. God wants to give peace peace. Amen. I can have peace in my marriage. I can have peace even with my enemies. Amen. I tell you this of a fact. There may be people that treat you wrong and it happened to me. But as you pray for them and you show them the love of God and you show them respect and you don't try to put them down and criticize them. But you know, I'm saying it will, it will, it will you know, rub you the wrong way and stuff like that. But as you stay in favor with God and peace and pray for your enemies, God will turn that enemy into a friend. He's done it for me many times. Amen? He turned that enemy into a friend. And sometimes that person will do the most for you. Amen. Because God is able to do that. Amen. God is able to turn enemies into friends. He's able, as the reason why Jesus said, pray for your enemies. Pray for them that despitefully use you and accuse you and misuse you. God said, pray for them because he can bring peace in those situations. Amen. He can bring peace with your family members he can bring peace with your children he can bring he can bring peace with and everything because god jesus said my peace i leave with you the world doesn't want you to have that but god said he wants you to have it amen <clears throat> god gives the, the gifts i'm talking about the gifts of god am i doing all right this morning it better be because i'm almost done <laughs> You know, I just like to talk to y'all. <laughs> Break up the, the, you know, the going, going, going. Because <clears throat> we're people. We're not, I'm not here to yell at you and scream at you. That just comes natural. <laughs> that comes from the, the, the enthusiasm that's in the heart to preach the word of God. You know, and, but, but that's not the goal. The goal is to share the word of God. The reality of the word of God. God said, Jesus said, not like the world give. The world wants to give you some things. But like I said, if you receive it, it will draw you towards the world. 
is you receive what God gives you is going to draw you towards God. Whatever gifts you receive or whoever you receive the gift from, it will draw you to that person. Right? And Satan is very crafty. Amen? He's not an idiot, trust me. He's not an idiot. He's been doing this for a long, long time. He knows exactly what he's doing. We have to, that's the reason why the Bible said to walk circumspect. Right? Keep your head on the swivel. <laughs> Watch out for what that old devil is trying to do. Amen? He's a very deceptive creature. And he, he will try to portray things and try to paint things in such a way. And lies, you know, the Bible says he's the father of all lies. Amen? If he ever lied to you, telling you that this preacher doesn't care about you, he's a liar, because I do. Amen? If he ever lied to you and said, this preacher preached to you because he's mad at you. No, no. This preacher wants you to be blessed. This preacher wants you to go to heaven. This preacher cares about your eternal soul. Amen? And so don't listen to the, the lie. If he lie about you, but lie. if he ever tells you a lie about this pastor, this preacher, just shake it off because it's a lie. Amen? It's a lie. I love and care for each and every one of you, and I want you to go to heaven. I want, the Bible said, I will have to give an account for your souls. I want to do it with joy, not with grief. Amen? I want to stand and say, Lord, I told him and I did it. And now we're in heaven together. Amen? That's what I want. And so don't listen to those lies of the enemy. I care. Just, we care about you. But Jesus, God's gifts are, are the best. God wants to fill our life with every perfect gift. Because that's what God has to give. In John 3, 16, you know that famous verse, he said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You can't get a better gift than that. Amen? That's the gift that keeps on giving. Jesus Christ, the, the gift to this world, that's the gift that, that brings salvation. To us. He said the grace of God brought salvation to us. It brought redemption. You know, we can, we can not only get saved, but God can redeem us from things. God can give forgiveness in our times of need. There can be restoration in all sorts. Whenever we need to be restored, all we have to do is call on Jesus. Amen. If we need forgiveness, he said, call. We have an advocate with the Father. Whatever we need from God, if our spirit and our soul, he said, call on Jesus and he will give you all the best of gifts the Bible tells us in John 16 24 he said ask that your joy may be full amen God said you have not because you ask not he said ask ask him ask him that he will fill your life with the joy of the Lord God gives the best gifts Amen. He gives us faith. He tells us in the book of Romans uh, that God dealt to every man a measure of faith God is not going to put doubt in your heart God will put faith in your heart. Amen. He's not going to put worries in your heart. He's going to put confidence and joy and peace in your heart. His gifts are the best. And as you come to the instrument, we'll wrap it up here with this last verse of Scripture. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4, we're talking about the gifts of God. It's better. It's better. Like I said, Jesus said, not like the world gift. The world wants to give you things that will draw you to the world. God wants to give you things that will draw you to Him. You have to decide who you want to be drawn to. Right? I want to be drawn to Jesus. Like I said, He is my light and my salvation. He is my rock, my fortress, and my strong tower. He is the hope. He's my hope. And so in Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4, he said, According as his divine power had given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue. So he said, God has given us everything good that pertains to life and godliness. And he wants to bring virtue and good things out of our life. And then he said in verse 4, he said, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So the world works through lust. The allurements. God works through love. Amen? God wants to draw us to Him. Like I said, whoever you receive the gift from is the one you're going to be drawn to. And each only can give what they have. The world have misery and disappointment, and in the end, hell. God have joy and peace, and in the end, 
eternal life. Give me Jesus, amen. Give me the gifts of God any day of this week and next week. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. I want Jesus. I want his gifts. I want his blessings. So as you close your, bow your head and close your eyes, in reference to the Lord, we open the altar for prayer. It's the time that we seek the Lord. The time that we consider the word of God. Let us draw closer to Jesus. For all things that he, give, he gives are nothing but good things that will benefit our life. Father, I thank you, God, for your word. I thank you for uh, the cross of Jesus Christ that you have shown us the length and the, that you will go to bring us the good things of God. I ask God that you will touch each and every one of us, our hearts, our lives, our mind. Help us to seek you this morning and to seek the good things of God and to seek heaven and eternal life. I worship you and praise you. We commit the rest of the service into your hands. Bless it now. In Jesus' name.
I'm glad I'm in a group of people that love Jesus. We want to draw closer to him because everything he gives is for our good. Amen? You say, preacher, what about when he spanks me? Well, maybe we need that too sometimes. Right? Amen. Sometimes we need that <coughs> correction. <laughs> I was messing with my wife yesterday because of teasing about getting the door for her. <laughs> oh, we're joking, okay, we're just joking. And then I went out and got it. I said, Steve, works. You told me and I did it. <laughs> we're just joking around. You know? <laughs> so even when God tells us, you know, it gets us to think, to make it work, and to get our mind straight. Amen. God bless you. We'll have a wonderful day, right, in the Lord. And pray to God to work a miracle so I can get back home safe in my vehicle. He will, right? And um, Lord willing, we'll be in church tonight. We're not ruling it out yet. That's the reason why he gave me two vehicles. <laughs> when one is done, I use the other one. It's all for his glory anyways, right? And then God bless you. Uh, we'll close the service in prayer. Appreciate each and one, every one of you. Each and every one of you. God bless you. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for the together. And thank you for the one good thing. We have something that... Look forward to this better than what the world offers. Grace, you bless our right home.